Okay, good morning everyone, and we are continuing here in Tehillim, in our studies of Tehillim, and we're holding in Samech Gimel in number 63, right in the middle. Just to remind you that this is going to be the last class before Pesach, I think as you can see from the attendance today, most women are already in their Pesach cleaning mode. Hopefully they'll have a chance to listen to it while they are busy cleaning later on this week. But the next class is probably not going to be until Sunday, April 23rd. So keep that in mind, Sunday, April 23rd, which will be a week and a half after Pesach is over. We're holding in Psalm Nechimel number 63, and we are in the middle of the Tehillim on, on verse He, which is number 5. Cain, and remember, David HaMelech over here is teaching us the lesson of his life. And that is that even when the times are tough, the tough don't get going. Rather, when the times are tough, you continue to turn yourself towards the Rebbe Nishailam. You praise Hashem, you thank Hashem, you sing to Hashem, you see the good. Instead of getting yourself enshrouded in the darkness of the misery that many other people would end up having at that time in their life. David was Mr. Optimistic and Mr. Positivity. He saw the good, he did not see the bad. He felt simcha, not the pain. He was not even almost aware of how devastated he should have been. Rather, he was so connected to the Rebbein Nishoylam that that connection allowed him to override all of the difficulties that he went through in his life. And it says like this, Kein avarechecha b'chayai b'shimcha So I will, bl- I'm sorry, Kein avarechecha b'chayai I will bless you in my life B'shimcha eser chapai, and in your name I will lift my hands. So David Melech is surrounded by Shaul Melech. David is surrounded by Shaul, his father-in-law. There's an army around him. He's cut off from civilization. He has no water. He has no food. He's he's thirsty, starving. He is in a in a big mess over there. And David says, "You know what I feel like doing right now? I feel like blessing you, just as I blessed you through all my entire life." And I'll lift up my hands to you, HaKadosh Baruch. It says, Rav Hirsch, David HaMelech is teaching us the following, and that this that we call the Mishkan, the Mikdash, the sanctuary that David HaMelech was speaking about previously, is not only to accept all the physical and the spiritual life of Hashem to the hand of His law, but also in return to devote this life that we receive to making His law a living reality in our lives. Says David HaMelech, what's the point of everything I learned? Is the point of everything that I learned over my life, all of the Torah, all of the mitzvahs, all the chachm, all the wisdom, is just to be a brainiac over here? Is it to be someone that can rattle off the answers to all the questions, the most profound and deepest questions that people have? Is it so I should know how to make a halachic statement over here and a halachic statement over here? Says David HaMelech, you know what all of my learning was all the time in the Mishkan, everything that I want, everything that I did, it was all so that I should be able to return and devote my life to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, live according to the laws which may, it becomes the reality of my life. The reason that we learn, the reason that we study, the reason that we try to amount and amass as much knowledge, wisdom, and Torah that we possibly can, is so that we should be able to conduct our lives in the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to do. And since that your Mishkan, your Migdash, your sanctuary is what taught me all of this, so my sole desire then is to bless you throughout my life, to advance the fulfillment of your will upon this earth. That's why I'm here, says David HaMelech. I'm here to show to you, and really the whole world is going to witness it as well, my mission in life is to make you happy, HaKadosh Baruch How am I going to make you happy? By doing what you asked me to do. There's mitzvahs, there's commandments, there's restrictions, there are obligations, there are responsibilities. The more that I will be in line and toe the line with what you want me to do, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that itself will be a tremendous bracha, a blessing that I'm going to give to you. So then says Rav Hirsch, what does it mean that my, I'll lift my hands in your name? 
So he says, hands, the palms of the hands, they're empty. So what are you doing lifting empty hands to Hashem? And he says, because the Dovah the Melech is, after he's recognizing all the good that he does have, he does know that he's lacking things, and therefore he's raising his empty hands to HaKadosh Baruch, and he's asking, please, Provide me with the things that I am lacking. And that is that in, only in your name, on the basis that you promised us, and on the basis of the determination to dedicate whatever I may receive from you to fulfill your will, meaning whatever you give me, Rebbein Shalom, I'm going to use it to serve you. If I'm lacking certain basic essentials and necessities, I'm lacking certain things in my life, I'm asking you to fulfill those, put those into my hands so that I can then convert them and I'll turn them back towards you and I'll serve you even better. So the Dabba Melech looks at everything in life as an opportunity to serve Hashem. Whatever I have, monetary, physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever I have, whatever I'm lacking, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, give me what I'm lacking and I'll use it to serve you. You know, everybody is complaining right now about the price of eggs in America, perhaps in the entire world. $6 a dozen, $8 a dozen, depending on where you go shopping. It's very expensive. We could recall not so long ago when a dozen eggs cost a couple of dollars. Maybe that was a maximum. Now it's minimum $5.99, $6, whatever store you go into. So how do you take your eggs and serve the Rebbe Yenusha'ilam? There's a story with Rav Shlomo Zalman Arbach, who was one of the great, great sages of the previous generation, he must have passed away almost 30 years ago. I remember myself being at his levai, at his funeral in Eretz Yisrael. There were about 300,000 plus people that were there. The streets were moving slowly through the roads of Yushalayim of Jerusalem as we accompanied the mace, the, the coffin, to its final resting place. And Rav Shlomo Zalman Arbach came from a very impoverished and poor family. So much so that they, th- they had six children, he being one of them, and his mother didn't have much food in the cupboard at all to cook for them or to make for them. And there was very often when they had only one egg for six children. So she would boil the, he- the egg, uh, make one hard-boiled egg, and then she would peel it and slice it into six different pieces, and every child in the family would get one little tiny sliver of egg, and that's what they would have for breakfast, and they were supposed to go off to yeshiva, to cheder, to seminary, wherever they were, and learn and engage in studying the wisdom of Hashem for the rest of the day. And Rav Shlomo Zaman Arbach said that as a result of living that impoverished life, and having just a little bit of an egg in the morning for breakfast, He had learned how to persevere through the challenges of life, even when you don't have everything that you, quote-unquote, that you need. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives you the little bit that He does. You learn how to make do with just a little bit, and you can push yourself and find the koichais, find the strength that comes from inside, the tenacity, the courage, the abilities, the power, the might that you have to be able to go on and serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So that's David HaMelech is saying over here. Give me what I'm lacking, and whatever it is that I'm lacking, I'm going to take it, I'm going to use it to come and serve you, Rebbe Yenusha'ilam. So that's, those are the words over here of Rav Hirsch. The, um, the Malbim writes on this Pasik, um, This is the blessing I'm going to bless you with. I'm not going to bless you about life itself, I'm going to bless you on all of the chesed that you have done for me, says David. Remember, David Melech is in the wilderness, no food, no drink, surrounded by the enemies, all by himself. His, it looks pretty grim and, and bleak over there. And yet David Melech is saying, let me bless you for all of the chesed that you do for me. In your name I will lift my hands. This that I raise my hands to pray. I'm not davening to you because of the physical life that I have, 
and and all the needs of the, the physical needs of this world. Rak b'shimcha, I I raise my hands in prayer to your name. I'm so grateful that I'm able to, says David, to praise you and to bless your name. And this David Amalek is once again teaching us how does a person overcome adversity in their life? How does a person rise above the challenges? How does a person not get bogged down when they see all the negative things that are happening around them? Says David, well, you got to train, you have to change the way that you look at the world. I will be grateful that I am alive. I will be grateful that HaKadosh Baruch is sustaining me. And therefore, I'm going to utilize my opportunities and the strengths that I have to praise you, Rebbe Nishalom. I'm going to bless your name. Thank you, Hashem. You should be blessed. HaKadosh Baruch should bless, you should bless yourself, whatever that will mean, in order that I can live in that elevated state and not get drawn down and sunk in to the misery. Again, as we pointed out, many, many people would end up falling into the quicksand of misery over here and yet David HaMelech, he doesn't look at the world like that. Everything is good. Everything is positive. The glass is always half full. And half full means I, I don't even deserve a half a full glass. I'm so grateful that there's half a glass that is full. My, my parnas is like this. My children are like this. My, the shidduchim is like this. The babies are like this. The, my friends are like this. Why are we always looking at what we don't have? Says David Amalek, look at what you do have. And when a person begins to train their mind to work in the positive, all of life becomes positivity. You start seeing the good. You have a, what's called an eye in taiva. You have a good eye that looks and it sees the good. They, make a, they say a statement in Chinuch and raising children that a parent should not see 80% of what their children do. That means that 80% of whatever a child is doing, just don't see. Overlook it. Don't focus in on it. See 20%. And the 20% that you see, you should make sure you're seeing the good stuff. So now your kid, the 20% that you see is good. You don't see any of the bad. All you see in your kid is good. So your kid is always looking like an amazing kid. It's sadik, it's sadik, it's wonderful. And the same thing applies to your spouse's 80% of what your spouse does, do not see. Only see 20%. And the 20% that you see should all be good. So that ends up meaning that all you see in your spouse is good. What a tzaddik he is. Oh, he's such a wonderful husband. He's so nice. He's so kind. He's so loving. He's like, all the wonderful things. Just see good. David Amalek is drowning in the midbar, in the wilderness. Thirsty, starving, all by himself. Nobody around. Chased down by the enemy. And David says, mm, you know what I feel like doing right now? Hashem, I'm so grateful to you. I just want to stand here and praise your glorious name. And that is what David Amalek did. And that's what he's teaching us. Rashi writes, I'm going to raise my hands to Davin to pray and to praise you as we are saying. The next verse over here. The next verse says, Says David Amelech is in Vav 6, like fat and marrow, tizba nafshi, let my soul be satiated. And my mouth will praise your mighty acts with renonois, with joyous lips. Says David Amelech, the way the Rev Hirsch explains it over here is. I'm here in the barren wilderness. But when I lift my soul to you and I become aware of your nearness, I cease to be in the desert. Such beautiful words. I'm in a wilderness. I'm all by myself. It's really hard, says David HaMelech. But when I realize that even here I'm close to you and your nearness is right here, I no longer see myself in the desert wasteland. I no longer feel hunger or thirst. I become satisfied in rich abundance as in days gone by. 
And as ever, Sifsa Yishbechuncha, my lips are going to praise you. So now, Sifsa Ranadoy Sahalapi, my mouth will proclaim the acts of God with joyous sound of the lips. I'm not deserted. I'm not by myself. I recognize you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I feel your closeness. I'm aware of you being over here. So therefore, what's, what does a Jew do when he feels close to Hashem? You open your mouth and you praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Says Rav Hirsch, David is saying that the strength and joyous exaltation which I'm granted, even in this isolated state, is another act of God, an emanation of Hashem, and I, which I will proclaim in words of song. So this is, once again, David HaMelech is teaching us how we are supposed to look at our lives. There's no misery. There's no feeling bad for yourself. There's no cursing the ground that you walk on because why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu do this to me and why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu that, do that to me and why did this person do this and this and that? No, 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 no. David HaMelech has nothing going for himself. But one thing he does, because he never lost his faith and he didn't get into the world of negativity and complaining, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is very near him. And when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is near a person, it's only natural that you want to express your gratitude in words of praise, in singing songs. He's singing songs. He's singing to HaKadosh Baruch for all the good that is there. And that is the way that we have to live. Just like the fats and the marrow, says the Mitzudah's David, just like the, the nefesh, just like a person is satisfied, from the fats and the marrow, it's very good and very hearty for a person. My nefesh, my soul, is going to be satisfied if I will merely express my gratitude to the Rebbe Nishayilam. Um, in many, many different ways that I can say thank you to Hashem. There's so many things that you can, there's so many angles that you could take, says the Mitzudah's David. If a person begins to examine their life and they examine all the things that are going on and they look and they look and they look, you could find that this is a benefit and this is good and this is a chesed and this is mercy and this is Hashem's hand. All the different things that you can find and you begin praising HaKadosh Baruch for all the details that are there. So then you're just a person that is expressing constantly, thank you Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. You, I am so grateful, so appreciative for all that you have done. Says the Malvin on these words very beautifully. And he says like this, Just like Chelev the Shemen, Odeshen, just like the fats and the marrow, Sheyish Ba'agu it is sustenance to the body, and you will be satisfied physically, I'm asking you, Hashem, satisfy my soul. Give me spiritual sustenance three times a day, every day, in the three prayers that we have, Shachris, Mincha, and Marev. Hagashmi. Just like you give to the body three times a day physical sustenance, I need spiritual sustenance as well. What gives my soul the spiritual sustenance that it's looking for? When it's praising the Rebbein Nisha'ilam. Shazem Mazen Anefesh, prayer is the Mazen, is the food, the sustenance for the soul. Kamoshe Kasav Kuzari. And this is, we know from the famous work, the Kuzari. The Kuzari writes, Just like the body needs a sustenance, and it cannot exist without it, So too, the mazain, the sustenance of the soul, is tefillah, is prayer. Because through our tefillah, you're able to be mizdabek, you can cling 
to your spiritual roots, to your neshama. Just like the body normally gets fed three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so too when it comes to davening, you start at night, the new day for a Jew starts at night, so the Erev, the nighttime is Marev, the morning is Shachris, and the afternoon is Mincha, Asicha Vahema, I will speak to you and I will pour out my soul, says David HaMelech. So even though I don't have food, even though I don't have drink, even though I have nothing over here, desolate land called the desert, but I do have one thing, and that's tefillah, that's prayer. And prayer will sustain me. Davening to HaKadosh Baruch will give me a chios, it'll give me strength, it'll lift me up, it'll make me strong. And it will give me the sustenance to my neshama, to my nefesh that I require in order to go another day, another day, another day. Which means he's teaching us another insight over here. Besides the praising of Hashem and seeing the good in Hashem, just keep davening. Keep davening every day. HaKadosh Baruch gives us a chance. Shachris, mincha, marav. Women may be shachris and mincha. But whatever it is that you daven, then you have your tehillim and you have when you can just call out to HaKadosh Baruch whenever you want. Call out to Hashem. Talk to Hashem. Have a conversation with Hashem. Pour out your heart. Let Him know how you're feeling on the inside. And then praise Him. Find the things to praise Him. See the details that are in your life. Even though it's hard, even though it's rough, and things aren't going the way that you want it. But you could find something good. You could always find something good that is there. And if a person does that, says the Malbim, quoting the words of David the Melech over here, that is the greatest spiritual satisfaction that a person could possibly have. <clears throat> the next verse, we're holding over here by seven, Rav Hirsch put seven and eight together. Im zecharticha al yitzuayim, if I will remember when I was upon my couch, ba'ashmurais egebach, then now in the night watches, I will meditate upon you. Kiyayi says, Rosalie, because you have always been my help. And in the shadow of your, your wings, I will joyously sing. Now, what is David Amalek saying? David Amalek is saying that, as Rev Hirsch points out, I remember in earlier days when I used to be, sit on a comfortable couch in the palace, I used to have everything going for me. Time was peaceful, even though as we go through Tehillim, we wonder, did David Melch ever have a peaceful day in his life? But he said there was times when I could sit in the chair and just relax and take it easy. <clears throat> and in those precious moments of peacefulness and tranquility, when everything was settled in my life, I was able to praise you very easily, says, says David Melch. However, now, during my nightly vigil, while I'm lying here on rocks, he didn't have a mattress, he didn't have a pillow, he's in the middle of the wilderness, he's lying on rocks, and he's in sand, in the midst of a desert, it's not such a glamorous five-star hotel room over there, with not even a bare couch on which to go, I don't even have a couch without the pillows, nothing. I meditate upon your nearness, which you show me even at this very hour. And that's the life of a Jew. The life of a Jew is that in the good times, you better recognize Hashem. Because if you can't recognize Hashem in the good times, you're certainly not going to recognize Him in the bad times. But in the hard times, when you are destitute and worn out and desolate and abandoned, even there and all the more so over there, you have to recognize HaKadosh Baruch Hu and that He never left you, He never abandoned you, and He's so close, He's so near to you, and he's so engaging in your life. And therefore, says Rav Hirsch, you show me your nearness even at this very hour when things, things don't seem so well. You will become my help. And without your aid, I would be no more. If it wouldn't be for you, HaKadosh Baruch, I wouldn't be surviving. Therefore, I feel safe, <clears throat> serene, and joyous beneath the shadow of your wings which means I was in my home, <clears throat> I was sitting on a couch, everything was comfortable, everything was great, life was good and tranquil and peaceful. And now you would think that as I'm 
in the Midbar, in the wilderness, and things are not looking so great for me, you would think that I would be agitated and anxious and I would be disappointed and frustrated and I'd have no respite. But, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'm confessing to you right now. And my confession is, is that with you in my life, no matter whether I'm in a big palatial estate and I'm surrounded by armed guards and I know that I'm safe and everything is good and I'm comfortable and the heat is on in the winter and the food at the table is laden with delicious food and treats and I'm surrounded by my family and my friend and my loved ones and everything is fantastic and magnificent and I'll praise you on that. You should know that even over here, when I'm all by myself, I'm not all by myself because I'm with you. I feel safe, serene, and joyous beneath the shadow of your wings. And that's the way that a yin has to look at their life. No matter what is going on in your life, no matter what tragedies, no matter what hardships, no matter what difficulties are going on, a person is always able to see and feel and be embraced by the Rebbe Nishayim. And when a person lives like that, that means that even in the times when everybody else is combusting and breaking and, and falling apart, you yourself are someone, you just see HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You see Hashem. You see light in the darkness. You see hope in the, in the misery. You begin to feel that no matter what is going on in my life, the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam, the master of the universe, he is literally right here together with me. And that makes me feel safe. That makes me feel serene. I feel in, in, embraced by the shadow of his wings. Says, no, nothing in the Malvim over here that we're going to see. Let's see a little bit further in, in Rav Hirsch. And this is a famous Pasuk in Tehillim. Tess, number nine. Dov kanaf shiacharecha. My soul cleaves after you. Be tomcha yiminecha. Your right hand has hold me up fast. Says Rav Hirsch, I would have thought that it should say Dov kabecha, that my soul is cleaving in you. What does it mean, acharecha, after you? My soul cleaves fast to endeavor to follow you. Says David HaMelech, you know what my life is all about? I'm going to follow you through thick and through, th through thin. I'm going to follow you wherever I go, wherever you want me to go, wherever you send me in life. Every single Jew is on a journey and we're wandering from here and to there. Sometimes things are clear and understandable and sometimes the pathway is very crooked and convoluted and there's thorns and sizzles and there's, there's pitfalls and there's stumbling blocks and there's broken down roads. There's all different things. Wherever I go, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, wherever the road of life is going to take me, I tell you one thing. And that one thing is that I'm, I'm chasing after you. Says the verse, whatever life may bring, I shall not allow anything to cause me to waver in this my striving to follow Hashem. And I sense that your right hand is holding me up. <clears throat> this is the way of a Jew. The way of a Jew is, is that no matter what path I'm going down in life, I'm always looking to follow HaKadosh Baruch and I'm always looking to find Hashem every step of the way. The famous mashal, the parable that we've told over dozens of times over the years. I ask my, wonder of myself often why I tell it over so many times, but the reason is because it's so true. And that's about the man that goes up to Shemaim after 120 years. And he begins, the HaKadosh Baruch Hu begins showing him all of the, of the places that he went in life, his whole long journey where he was. And everywhere that he walks, there's two sets of footsteps. There's his and there's the footsteps of Hashem. And then at a certain point, as the man tells him, my life got hard, my life got difficult, where were you, Rebbeinu Shailam? And he looks and he sees there's only one set of footsteps that are walking down the sandy beach. And the man says, you see, HaKadosh Baruch I told you, 
in the darkest and most difficult times of my life, I was walking, I was forced to walk all by myself. You were no longer there holding my hand. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to the man, you don't understand. You know whose footsteps those are that you are seeing in your life? Those are mine. I picked you up and I was carrying you every step of the way. Says David HaMelech, when you are going through difficulties and you are going through hard times and things are, are not easy for you, you have to remind yourself again and again and again and again the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam is the one that is holding me up. He is supporting me in his loving embrace and his warmth. I will continue to survive and to exist and be sustained. And therefore, no matter where I go in life, says David HaMelech, no matter where the, the journey of my life is going to take me, which I know is all being orchestrated by you, I am always going to be chasing after you and following you and letting you lead me because I know that you are the leader that will not lead me astray. You are the leader that will not lead me in the wrong place. You are the one that will lead me to where I need to be. And if I will just machazik, strengthen myself in my amun and my bitachin in these areas, then I will never walk alone on the path. You will always be together with me. Says the Malbim, Bi tamcha yiminecha, your right hand sustains me. By your ikr simachti al shiraisi al yidezeh, shani dovek by Hashem. I'm still besimcha, I'm rejoicing, says David Amelech, because I see that you are supporting me. Vashkachasai mas medes alai, your hashkacha, your divine providence, is continuing to, continuing to be over me at all times. This is my main desire, that I should be sustained by you, held up by you, and that you should always be watching over me. I don't care about the physical success and the Gashmi success and all that that's in this physical world. That means meaningless to me. But to know that you're holding me up, to know that you're Ashkacha, that you're watching over me, to know that the things that are happening in my life are not just happenstance, just coincidentally happen to be like that. But rather you are the one that is orchestrating all of the events in my life like a master conductor, bringing all the ensemble together so that every <coughs> instrument, every person, every situation, every detour in my life, it's all a song that is in unison, creating a beautiful symphony. You are Kaddish Baruch are the one that's guiding me. And that for me is the greatest simcha, that is the greatest joy that I could possibly have. Says of Gamliel Rabinovich on these words, Yesh davka nafshi acharecha, my soul clings after you. Yadua, it's brought down from Kabbalistic sources. Ki achor roi mez lamidas hadin, the word achor afterwards, it means the midas hadin, the attribute of judgment. The veneer must be there, and therefore the verse is hinting to us. Ki adam adavik ba kodesh baruch hu, a person that is davik that clings to Hashem. The kol mat savav in all of his situations, the af beis sheshor alav midas hadin, even when the attribute of judgment is hovering around him, zoichel yidei he will merit to have. Be tamcha yiminecha your right hand is going to support me. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will turn over the Midas Hadin, the attribute of judgment, to the Midas of Rachamim, which is the right hand of Hashem. Says Rav Gamliel Rabinovich, that if you continue to cling to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even in the difficult times, when things look very bleak, and hard to understand why HaKadosh Baruch Hu is doing what He does. But you don't waver in your faith, and you stay close to Hashem, and you believe in Hashem, and you dive into Hashem, and you serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and it doesn't weaken you in your mitzvah observance, and your amuna, and your, and your Torah, and your tefillah. On the other hand, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. 
it'll be a schos that you have that Hashem will turn over the din, the judgment. He'll have rachamim, he'll have mercy, and he'll switch the gezerah, the decrees that are there on you, and suddenly you'll start seeing blessings coming to your life. David HaMelech was never worn down from the hardships that he went through. Adarab, on the other hand, every hardship just made him stronger and stronger and stronger and brought him closer and closer to the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam. Says the next verse over here, Ve'ema l'shoya yevakshu nafshi These people are trying to destroy my soul. But they themselves will end up going down under the world. And he says that even though these, even though I've been forsaken by men, I rejoice again in serene, full vigor of life in God who perhaps is even nearer to me now than before. Keep this in mind. This is another source of chizuk, of strength and consolation that a person can take. It is quite possible, especially if you know how to look at it in the right way, that in the darker moments of one's life, in the challenging situations in one's life, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is nearer to you now than He was even before. Because you're also getting nearer to Hashem. Because when things don't go well and you have to buckle down, and you have to work hard to see the good, and you have to work hard to cling to Hashem, and you have to acknowledge that kol ma'di ovid rachman letav ovid, everything that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does is for the good. And you believe it in your heart, in your kishkas, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is testing you to bring you closer to Him. And so on and so forth. You reveal a, a revelation of your own neshama that never was privy to, to uh, be revealed in the world before. But you also have a new look, a new understanding a new perspective on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and you're revealing a Hiskalus HaShchin, a revelation of HaShchin in a way that you never did before either. And therefore, even in those times, says David HaMelech, I'm even closer to you right now. And this is more of the, of the inspiration that David HaMelech is giving to himself and leaving over to all of Klal Yisrael for generations. And that is, the hard times are not bad times. The hard times in a person's life are just to bring us closer to Hashem and bring about a bigger revelation of the Rebbein Shalom and the Shechina. And therefore, it's even nearer to me now than it was before. I'm closer to you. So all these people, says David, who tried to destroy me and ruin me and make my life miserable, the laugh's on them. Because at the end of the day, I just got closer to you. And I'm more convicted, I have more going in in my life together with you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and therefore I'm much more aware of you in every step that I take in life. I know I'm not by myself. So they can rise up against me. They can try to destroy me. They can try to get me out of this world, but it'll never happen. Because you are literally, as we said before, you're holding me right now, walking me through every step that I'm going on. Says further, I'm skipping now to the last Pasik. However, let the king rejoice in God. And everyone will swear by him glory. Because the mouths that are going to utter lies will fall silent. Says David HaMelech, the following. Which king is rejoicing? So we'll say the way the Rav Hirsch says it, and then we'll see a beautiful insight from Gamliel Rabbanovich. And he says, who is the king? The king that he's talking about is his, his dear father-in-law, Shaul HaMelech, King Saul, who is the one that was chasing him down and got him into this mess in the, in the first place. And David HaMelech says, since that I know that everything that happens in my life is from Hashem, nobody could ever hurt me if it wasn't supposed to be that way. Nobody would put me through painful experiences if it wasn't supposed to be in that way. And therefore, I have no grudges and I hold nothing against my father-in-law who has tried to make my life miserable. Why? Because he is just a pawn in the world of Hashem. 
he is only doing what HaKadosh Baruch would have done to me anyway. He's just the shaliach, he's just the messenger that is doing it. So I should have a grudge against him? Chas v'chalila. If I held a grudge against him, it's like holding a grudge against Hashem. And I don't have any grudges against Hashem. On the other hand, as David says, I, I respect HaKadosh Baruch Hu. <coughs> I am grateful to Hashem. <coughs> I admire Hashem for everything that He's doing to me. I thank the Rebbe Hashem for the life that He's given me with all the hardships and the challenges because it brings out the special Kedusha that's inside of me. It makes me a greater person. And therefore, as a result of that, I have no tightness, I have no complaints, I hold nothing against my father-in-law, and anyone that holds their allegiance to my father-in-law and listens to what he has to say, and they came to attack me, nothing against them either. Why? Because they're just doing the bidding of Hashem. Because Baruch runs the world. I'm not upset with anybody, Hashem runs the world. Nobody could make me sad. Nobody could make me upset. Nobody could frustrate me. I can allow myself to get frustrated. I can allow myself to get sad. I can allow myself to get down. But if I look at everything happening in my life, is it's all from Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch is running the world in such a way that that's what's going on right now. <clears throat> so then I have nothing at all to be upset about. I have nothing to be angry with. I have nothing to be resentful for. On the other hand, Shaul, you're my father-in-law. I'll continue to give you the honor that you deserve. I, you've got all these people over here, your cronies, <clears throat> that are listening to you and they're surrounding me in the desert. No complaints. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't want it to happen, it would not have happened anyway. And therefore it's all the hand of Hashem. And a person that gets upset, you're getting upset with Hashem. And therefore, I leave it be. I will respect the king, King Shaul HaMelech, my father-in-law. I will respect his ministers. I will respect the people that have risen up against me because they're only doing the shlichos, the messenger service, that HaKadosh Baruch himself set up to do already. That's the way that Rav Herseth, but listen to the way that Rav Gamli Rabbi Nova says, Va'amelech yismach be'elokim. The king will rejoice in Elokim, in God. Now what does that mean? Yesh levar de'ech remez. I could explain this to you in a way that's a remez, there's a hint in this verse. Va'amelech yismach be'elokim. The king will rejoice in Hashem. And this goes back to what we said before. The word, the name Elohim is always talking about the attribute of judgment of a God. When man lives in a happiness, in any situation that he's in, even when Hashem is acting with him, in Midas Hadin, strictly and judging him. However, but Hashem, but the person himself <coughs> will admit to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, to thank Hakadosh Baruch Hu, praise Hakadosh Baruch Hu in the same way that he praises Hashem, even when he has rachamim, when there's mercy in his life. Yes, you 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 will be you will merit. To come to the level of being a melech like a king, you'll be a ruler over yourself. That means that if I could, in the times when I see Elohim, midas adin, praise Hashem and thank Hashem and see the good Nakodesh Baruch Hu, even when things are not going well, just the same way that I would when I see midas arachim, ooh, Nakodesh Baruch Hu, thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate it. You're amazing, you're wonderful. Look what you did for me. You gave me a job, you gave me a wife, you gave me children, you gave me nachas, you gave me health, you gave me all these things. Thank you, Hashem. On those days, I have no problem thanking and praising HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If I could praise Hashem even in the dark moments of my life, the hard times in my life when I don't see all the goodness and I can say, thank you, Hashem. Thank you for what you're doing to me then you become what's called the Melech. You rule over yourself. You rule over your desires. You rule over your bad midos. You rule over your emotions. You rule over your intellect. You rule over your Avedis Hashem. You're ruling over your Melech. You're a king. You're the king. A king is always indicative of rulership, of monarchy, of power, of might. A person who can see the good, you become your own personal king. Nobody will affect you. Nothing that comes your way will bring you down. 
because you're always sitting on the throne of glory and you are in control of yourself and the other things in your life will not be in control of you. And he explains, the way of the world, when a person rejoices and they praise Hashem, it's usually only when they have mercy in their life and they have chesed in their life from Hashem. Hashem and the name of Yud Kei which is the name of kindness of God and mercy, that's the name that's in their life. However, when difficulties come their way, suffering, and the attribute of judgment is now on top of this person, Rahman al Islam, we we shouldn't know such things. Av Shemishtadil Le Kabalas Yisobiava, even though that the person tries their best to accept the suffering that they have in life, be Ava with love. I'm not gonna get angry at Hashem. I can't, I can't. Hashem is doing it to me. I'm not gonna get angry. So I'm the Kabul the Yisurm be Ava with love that a Kodishbaucha has given to me. The Eno Baba Tarunya, and I will not come with complaints and the like. Chas Shalom. Achim Kozais, nevertheless, you still do not accept the suffering that a Kodesh Baruch Hu brings upon you with happiness the way that you do when he brings good upon you. You see that things are not so good. You, think that things, you see that things are rough and difficult to handle. But you say, you know what? I know everything is coming from Hashem. Called the Abraham on the top of it is all good. I don't have any time. I have no complaints. I'll accept it. I'll go to Be Abba with love. I accept what Hashem is doing because I know that if Hashem is doing it to me, it's all for my good. But your happiness, that's what's lacking. If I Baruch Hu made you win the lottery, woo, you'd be jumping out of your skin. Wow. If a Kodesh Baruch Hu brought you the Shidduch, woo, wow, he brought you a Shidduch, wow, you're standing in the Chabot, wow, it's amazing, I'm so excited, I'm so happy. If a person was sick and they had a miraculous recovery, wow, the person is mamish calling the whole world and saying, Hashem is so kind, he's so wonderful, he's so benevolent, look what he did for me. You're happy, you're besimcha. But when a person is going through challenges, even if they could be macabre, they could accept it, be Abba with love, that I know that this is best. Simcha, the happiness, it's not really there. We walk around with a little heavy feeling. We're like downcast. We're in a bad mood. No, Abba, yes, Hashem, I know everything you do is for the best. I know it's all wonderful. We say the words a thousand times to ourselves. It's all good, it's all good. But we're not happy. Somebody sees everything all right? Yeah, 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 fine, everything's fine. Sure, you look a little bit, no, 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 you know, people walking around with their shoulders like this, head is down like this, everything okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Where's the simcha? Where's the joy? Where's rejoicing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Whether it's Midas Hadin or Midas HaRachim, it's all the same HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's all the same Hashem. If I'm happy when Hashem does good, I have to be happy when Hashem does what in my eyes is not good. It's Midas Hadin. The Aderich Shematzinu the Gemara, like the Gemara says, we quoted this Gemara last week. My Chayv Levarich Al Ara. What should a person bless when bad befalls them? Kashem Shemavarich Al Atoiva. Just like a person has to bless Hakadosh Baruch when something good happens to them, you're obligated to bless Hakadosh Baruch when something bad happens to you as well. Omar Rava, what does Rava say? La Nitzuch Ha'Elam La Kibluni B'Simcha. You are obligated to accept. The difficult things in your life, besimcha with joy, happiness, if it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one orchestrating my life. So when he does good, I'm happy, Hashem, thank you, it's such a pleasure. But Hashem is still orchestrating my life, even when things are not going so well. I have to be happy that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that's running the world. I have to be happy that HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw that this is exactly what I need to be misakin to fix myself up. This is what I need to become a greater person. I saw Maisa just recently with the Chavetz Chaim. In the Chavetz Chaim, there was a, there was a, a Yid that was living in an apartment complex in, I think, believe it's Eretz Yisrael. And he was a younger fellow, and there was an older man that lived a floor or so up. And the older man, it was rumored that he was a student of the Chavetz Chaim. 
And this young man wanted for many years to get a, a conversation with this man. He wanted to hear stories about the Chavetz Chaim that maybe nobody else ever heard before. So finally he worked up the courage to go and speak to the man. And the man welcomes him into his house, so kind, so nice. He sits him down at the and says, what can I do for you, young man? And he said, I heard that you're a Talmud, that you were a student of the Chavetz Chaim. I was hoping maybe you could share some stories and some reminiscence that you have of the holy and saintly Chavetz Chaim. So the man says, I'll be honest with you. By the time that I got to the Chavetz Chaim's yeshiva, he was already old and weak and ailing, and he didn't even come to the yeshiva. I never had a chance to really learn from the Chavetz Chaim. And the boy was very, the young man was very disappointed. He says, but I'll tell you a story that I witnessed with my own eyes that will shed some light onto the greatness of the Chavetz Chaim. And he said that in that last year of his life, when I got to the yeshiva, the Chavetz Chaim was like under guard and watch. They didn't want people to come and bother the Chavetz Chaim. He wasn't able to see people anymore and give out his brachas and listen to them and give them advice. He was very, very weak. They wanted to save every ounce of his energy. So every day there were two bachrim, two boys in the yeshiva that were put like at guard duty in front of the house of the Chavetz Chaim and they were not to let anyone in that was not supposed to be there. So when people that were coming, that they wanted his bracha, he's sorry, the Chavetz Chaim can't, he doesn't have energy, he couldn't do it. One day, I'm appointed to be the bacha, the boy with my friend, were there to guard the Chavetz Chaim and his, and his life. And a couple comes, a man and a woman, and they said, saying, we need to speak to the Chavetz Chaim. And I said, the Chavetz Chaim is, he's not seeing it. No, no, no. We need to speak to the Chavetz Chaim. And they're pushing and pushing and more pushing away. And we're saying, no, you can't. Until finally, they, with brute strength, the husband and wife, push themselves through us and they come into the house. And we're chasing after them. And the next thing we know, the wife and the husband are standing at the bedside of the Chavetz Chaim. And the wife begins screaming as she opens up her coat. She takes out an infant child and she tosses him down onto a, into a chair and she says, you take my baby. I can't take care of this child. He's deaf and he's mute and there's nothing for me to do with him. I can't take care of this child. You take my baby. And he said, I'm a bacha. I'm watching this whole scene. The woman is crying. The Chavetz Chaim is sitting there watching. And suddenly the Chavetz Chaim closes his eyes. And the eternity passed. Ten minutes it looked as if the Chavetz Chaim was in a deep sleep. We actually had to feel under his nose to make sure that he was still alive. We didn't even know he was alive. And after 10 minutes, the Chavetz Chaim opens his eyes and he begins smiling. And he says over that many years ago when I was a child, I had a Rebbe whose name was Rav Shleima. And Rav Shleima was a tzaddik, Yisoyed Oilom. He was a big, big tzaddik. He learned Torah, he knew Torah, he taught Torah, he was mechazik, hundreds of people to, to be able to learn, and he taught me Torah. This man, Rav Shlomo, went on in his life, and he lived a, a life of tzitkos, of righteousness and purity and sanctity all the days of his life. Finally, at a ripe old age, he passed away, and he went up through all the gates of Gan Eden, all the different gates of all the different places in the world to come. And he was passing every test with flying colors. He was a man of great Kedusha. And he gets up to the holy gates themselves. And he's about to enter inside. And as he's about to enter into Gan Eden, suddenly a group of black Malachi Chabala, dark angels come. And they say to Hashem, you're going to let this man go into Gan Eden? He sinned in this world. And they begin to produce the sins that he did, which was not a lot. But it was enough in the eyes of Hashem that Hashem said, you're right. How are we going to let him in to the world to come? And they said to Reb Shlomo, what do you want to do? If you would like, we can send you to Gehenna. It'll be a miserable place down there for 11 months. We'll torture you to death to absolve you from all your sins. Or we could send you back down to this world. And you could be mesak and you could fix up what you did wrong in this life. And so Shalom thought about it and he said, 
But if I go back down to that world, how can I be guaranteed that I'm not going to sin again? And in the Bezdin Shamayla, in the heavenly courts, they said, Reb Shleima, you have a good taina. You have a very good complaint and a good question. So you know what we'll do? We're going to send you back down into the world in a way that you will never be able to sin again. And your life will be a rectification of the sins that you did in this lifetime. And then you'll be granted admission into the holy gates, into Gan in the world to come. The Chavetz Chaim gets up from his bed and he walks over to the baby, the mute and the deaf child on the chair wrapped in a blanket. And he says, Baruch Haba Rav Shleima, welcome Rav Shleima back to the world. Baruch Haba, welcome are you. May you have an easy time in this world to go through what you need to so that you should be granted permission and admission into the world to come. At this moment, the woman is crying tears, buckets and buckets of tears, and she runs over to the child and she grabs him close. And she's crying and she's hugging and she's kissing with a smile of besimcha. She says, now I have the strength to be able to take care of you and give you the life that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to have. Says Rav Gamliel Rabinovich, David HaMelech is teaching us over here, you can all have Yisur, and everybody goes through difficult things in our life. And we can even accept them upon ourselves and say, yes, I know it's all for the good. But do we do it with simcha? Do we do it with joy? That's what the Eivishter wants to know from us. And over here, David is teaching us, this is the highest level of accepting uh, suffering and difficulties on yourself. Accept it with joy, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You love me and you care about me and everything you do is for the good. And this is going to make me a better person. When you come to such a high level of joy, even within the Midas Hadin, you are you will merit to come to the Madrega, to the level of a Melech, of a king. You will be in control of yourself and the world and the pressures and the people and the situations and the emotions and the disappointments and the frustrations. It will have no impact on you at all because you are the king and you will be a king and you will have strength and you will have royalty in your midas, in your amunah, in your bitachin, in your avodas Hashem. And in that way, we'll walk around besimcha with joy, be'ezes Hashem, all the days of our life. Have a chakosh v'sameach, a wonderful yom tiv, hatzlach with all the cleaning and the preparations and the cooking and the traveling and the like. And in Yitz Hashem, we will meet each other after Pesach Nat in Makar Chaim of Tarzana, California for the up for the next year, but rather we'll be together with all of our families and everyone of all of Klal Yisrael in Yerushalayim, 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 Thank you, Rabbi Holy. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you, Rabbi Holy. You're welcome.